everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be sorting out a coolant leak on my Mini. Um, I was driving home from work the other day um, and the, the blower started blowing out cold air rather than hot air, um, which I thought was a bit weird. And I looked down and the coolant temperature light was on on the dashboard. Um, so sort of limped it home, I was only a mile from home anyway, so got it home um, safely, um, opened the lid for the coolant reservoir and it's completely empty. So I filled it up um, as, you, as you would and um, yeah, when I went out to the car the day after, um, it was completely empty again. Looking under the car, there was a huge pool of um, coolant. So it's clear that there's a leak. Have a look at this clip. Yep, there's a coolant leak. And as you can see, what I did there was use a piece of cardboard under the car um, and basically that way I could see where the leak was coming from. So it looks like it's coming from the front left down there somewhere. So what I'm going to do is get the bumper and the crash bar off uh, and we're going to have a look and, uh, and see what we can see. Alright now, so I'm going to take the, uh, the crash bar off. There's a couple of different bolts. Um, if you go and check out the video in the iCard when I did the alternator, I'll show you this step in, uh, in a bit of detail. So go and check that out if you're unsure. But for now I'm just going to crack these off and uh, get the crash bar off. Okay, so I was uh, taking the crash bar off as I said and I looked down and noticed this pool of water and as you can see I think that radiator is absolutely dead. So as you can see I can literally put my finger through that radiator, <laughs> that's where it's leaking. New radiator time boys. Okay so I've got the crash bar off and obviously the bumper off. As you can see there's radiator still leaking coolant out. Um, so yeah, I think that is it. I've, uh, I've disconnected the air intake pipe. Um, I'm just going to pull the radiator and the air con condenser forward, um, and yeah, get it off and just clarify that that is definitely what's wrong with it before I go ahead and order a new one. Okay, so I've moved the air con condenser out of the way. Obviously, there's only so much I can move out of the way because obviously it's still attached. Um, but as you can see now, the bottom of the radiator is absolutely rooted, um, and you can actually see the water dripping out from here um, and you can you can kind of see the water jiggling about there so I'm going to uh, get this radiator off um, and uh, get it swapped out to get the uh, air con condenser off there was a bolt there and there was a bolt there that one gave us uh, some trouble so um, yeah I managed to get that one out in the end um, but yeah I think I'm going to get the radiator out now uh, it looks like there's some bolts down here. So I'm going to try and release this one and this one first, just pull them out and uh, yeah, work through it and try and get the radiator out. So I managed to pop this little pull screw thingy out the top and that's pulled the radiator forward a touch. There's a little clip at the bottom, so I'm just going to pop that in and see whether I can wiggle the radiator out. Um, Alright, so I was trying to avoid doing this for as long as possible. I think it's time to take the radiator hoses off. So there's one down there as you can see, um, and there's one there. <coughs> it's these horrible clamps, so I'm going to get a plier on, set of pliers on them and pull them off and drain that coolant into a bucket. So I finally managed to get the radiator out. Um, once I've done doing them bolts and pulled these clips out, um, it's pretty much just a case of pulling it towards you and eventually it will come out. As you can see now, I've got the radiator at the back of the car and you can see just how messed up that is. You can actually see it's bowing. Um, which is no good um, but yeah got the radiator right now when I got the coolant hoses off that one and that one nothing came out of that pipe and nothing came out of that pipe I can see there's a little bit in there but that's never good when that happens so yeah um, I did disconnect this wiring harness as well you just pull this off the little radiator shroud thingy um, so yeah I'm just going to uh, separate the so I'm just going to separate the fan off the radiator now I think it's a simple test oh, there you go <laughs> Um, because we'll probably have to reuse that. So now we've got the radiator separated from the fan, um, we can go ahead and, uh, and get a new one ordered. As you can see, that's in no fit state. Right end, so um, I've got the front end off the car, um, and in the process, this was, um, I think they call it like a slam panel or something. Um, it's always been sort of broken, um, 
taken it off, I've decided to replace it and it's actually snapped as I took it off. So um, yeah, I'm replacing that, replacing the radiator. Um, I'm just sort of tucking everything away for now because I won't be able to get a radiator for a while. It's Saturday um, and it's half three. So I won't be able to get anything um, for probably till next week now. Um, so I'm gonna tuck everything away and uh, yeah, leave it there like that in a sorry state. They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine. So I'll catch back up with you once the radiator and the slam panels arrived and we'll piece it back together. So I've managed to find a new slam panel and radiator um, on eBay. Uh, for 40 quid, so I'm gonna go and pick it up now. It's in Wensbury, so it's a little bit of a drive. Um, so we're gonna go and pick it up and hopefully refit it tomorrow at some point. Um, but yeah, so uh, 40 quid for the two actually seemed really good. Them slam panels were looking to be about 100 odd quid, um, and the radiators we were looking at like 60, 70 quid. So to be fair, to pick up the two for 40, I'm quite happy with. The slam panel's in really good condition, so even if the radiator is a little bit bust up, then uh, it's not too big of an issue. Um, I can just buy another radiator. But uh, yeah, gonna go and grab it now. So we're back from collecting the radiator and the, uh, the bash panel now. Um, it's obviously quite late, so we'll have a look at fitting them tomorrow. It's in really good condition, um, so I need to go and grab some coolant first thing. Um, and then yeah, get it get it all back together and uh, get the corn in it and bleed it. So uh, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Before I posted this video, um, finally got time to get back out on the car. I've got my little makeshift gazebo thing. Yep. Um, yeah. Let's uh, let's start cracking on with the car. I've got to get the new radiator and bash panel on. Uh, I've got to take this aircon condenser off because uh, I'm going to be putting my one back on. I think I'm going to keep the fog lights because they're cleaner than mine. Take the horns off, put my horns on, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Get it all installed back on the car. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to strip down the aircon condenser. Um, I'm going to strip off the fan on the back because, as you can see, it's a little bit broken. Um, but that's not a problem because I'm going to put my old fan on it. Um, I'm going to strip off the pipes um, and, yeah, strip off the horns and we'll get putting it back on. I'll catch back up with you when I've got a fresh, plain bash panel. Okay, so the front slam panel and the radiator is on. To put it on, you pretty much lay it flat. Pretty much like that, and get these little plastic bits over. And once they're over, push it up, and then we'll uh, we'll bolt the condenser on, and then the front bar on. So I'm just sorting out the bleed screw now. Uh, the one that was in it is this one, which you can see is all mashed up. So I bought a new one, which is in perfect condition. So I'm gonna put that on now. going to leave it off a touch because obviously we need to bleed the system. So I haven't bolted anything in place yet, I've just pushed the slam panel on. So I'm going to put this top radiator hose on now while I've still got good access to it. Um, pretty much just push it on nice and easy. So you get, get your pliers over that and push it down at the end. These are a bit of a pain in the backside. They're on, you're all good. Now this is obviously really easy and it's uh, it's so important to remember to do because obviously you need your fan to work. Um, so just match the pins to the pins on that. Sorry, it's not really a one-handed job, but everyone knows how to plug in the connector. 
So once you've got that plugged in, it actually slides onto this little grey rail, as you can see, and that's sorted. Need to tighten that up there. Okay, so next we're going to put the aircon condenser on. So I'm going to show you that. Okay, we're going to slot the aircon condenser into place. So these little black hooks, you need to basically hook this bottom tab for the condenser onto them. And then do the same on the other side. It's actually a bit more of a seat on the other side. And then pop this into there, just like so. So now we're going to put the uh, screw back in that holds the top of the aircon condenser in place. So now I'm going to pull all the wiring connectors through from the wheel side into the slam panel. On the uh, passenger side I'm going to start with the air temperature sensor. Feed that through and then feed through the cables for the horn and the lights. And now finally I'm going to get my bulb and put it down at the bottom. Those guys just twist into place. Okay, so next up on the list is the crash bar. I'm just going to come and lift that into place now. One thing I actually did forget to do, uh, which would have been a bad day, uh, is the bottom radiator hose. I haven't put that in place yet. It's pretty much a case of reaching down there, pushing it on. Just like you did with the top one, and then move that little clamp down. You can see it's on the radiator there, so I'm going to move that clamp down now, plug this connector back in, and get the crash bar on. Now the crash bar's on, I'm going to grab the air temp sensor, throw it through the side. And pulls out here. So that. Now the sensor actually has somewhere to clip into on the bumper. Um, if you follow along at home you'll be able to see it. Um, but you basically just slot it into there. Lift the bumper on, up onto the car. So, and put these corner bolts back in. Now make sure you connect this to the top of the uh, slam panel. Connects into your airbox. Feeds fresh air into it. It's quite important. Now I'm just going to pop my indicator bulb back in. Um, and obviously plug in the connectors for them. It's a little bit easier to do this with a bumper off. But Okay, so I'm just going to spend a minute going through and just having a quick check over everything I've done basically. Just make sure that I've done everything right, I've reconnected all the hoses, cables, all that sort of fun stuff. Um, as you will have noticed, I haven't put my bumper back on properly. Uh, one, in case we need to take it off, and two, you'll notice mine's actually snapped. Um, and I've actually been cable tying it on. So if anyone's got a chilly red bumper for an R53 that looks like mine for a nice price, let me know. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna spend five minutes going through now and then we'll fill the coolant up and bleed the system. So as you would have seen, um, I just went and got some coolant out of the Subaru, which is the first for Subarus worldwide, but there we go. Um, so I picked this up from Halfords, just ready mixed antifreeze. Uh, I got five litres, this uses six, so I'm going to mix in a litre of water. So first things first, I'm going to open this bleed screw down here, the one I replaced, just so we don't get any weird airlocks in the system. I'm going to put that to one side. Okay. Moment of truth to see whether they're a bit of them but together properly. And you will see I'm pouring the bottle sideways. That just allows less air to get in. 
um, so that it doesn't sort of plop forward and it allows you to control the pour a little bit more. Okay, so the overflow tank is full. It's quite hard to see, but you can see the, uh, the edge of the liquid there. Um, pretty much that means probably the radiator is full um, and that sort of thing, but obviously we need to get the coolant circuit in the system. So what I'm gonna do is start the car and make sure I keep this topped up as it's running and circulating the system. smoke is just all the coolant burning off the manifold from when I dropped it. So one thing you do want to do is have your heat on high uh, and have your fans on low. What that'll do is get the water circling through the thermostat, get the thermostat to open um, and get the water circulating through it and heat that up as well. Okay so I've let the engine run for a while. Um, it seems to be pretty good. Uh, it's holding the temperature well. Um, the overflow bottle dropped so I've just been topping it back up and I'll just show you the bleed screw now. The fact that coolant comes out of that bleed screw is a really good sign. Um, it means that uh, the engine's bleeding properly. Um, it means there's not much air in there. Uh, as you'll see in that clip then, I'm gonna count that as a success. I'm gonna keep an eye on the level, keep bleeding it. Um, but yeah, so for now, thank you for watching. We're on the road to 200 subscribers. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. Um, and yeah, keep your eye out on my Instagram for an update on the giveaway that we'll be doing to 200 subscribers. Um, in the meantime, hit the thumbs up button, share it with all your mates, and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one.